Well, I guess he had access to a, a fairly uh, substantial range of computers in the University of Lyon. And also, I should mention, there was another paper on this topic about 10 years ago by Elsenhans and Jarnall. And they developed a fairly sophisticated algorithm for searching for these solutions. And he hasn't really improved that algorithm. He's just kind of reapplied it a few years later when our, uh, our sort of computing power has become a lot more um, substantial. As I've mentioned, these two are still the remaining mystery numbers that we don't know anything about. Um, but as we discussed in the last number file video, there are lots of numbers up to 100 for which we actually know that there are definitely not any solutions. So those were the numbers which could be written as um, either 9 times m plus 4 for some other integer m. So for example, you could take m equal to 0, and we know that number 4 cannot be written as a sum of 3 cubes. Or the numbers which are of the shape 9 times another integer plus 5. And we know that through like a proof, like, you know. Yeah, that's a very simple proof, which, if you like, I can show you. Did we not do that last time? We didn't do that last time. Let's do it then. I'll give you a crack at it. Let's think about all the possible remainders are of integers on division by 9. And let's just draw a table of those. The only possible remainders are going to be the numbers between 0 and 9. Now let's just cube those numbers. 0, 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 27, 64, 1, 2, 5, 2, 1, 6, 3, 4, 3, 5, 1, 12. And now let's think about the, again, the remainder of r cubed, again, on division by 9. So 9 goes into 0, well, 0 times and you're left with a remainder of 0. 9 goes into 1 0 times, you're left with a remainder of 1, left with a remainder of 8. 9 goes into 27 3 times. 3 times. Remainder 0. Remainder 0. 64, 7 times with a remainder of 1. And if you do the same with the other ones, you get 8, 0, 1, 8. So now all, all I want to do is think about the possible remainders of the sum that we're interested in, which is x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed, uh, again, on division by 9. So what I've observed here is that if I take any number and cube it, and think about this remainder on division by 9, look, I only get three possibilities, either 0, 1, or 8. So if I'm interested in the remainders of this number on division by 8, all I have to do is kind of consider all possible sums of the shape well, I'm interested in the remainder of 0, 1, or 8, plus 0, 1, or 8, plus 0, 1, or 8, again, on division by 9. So now I just have to go through all 27 possibilities here. Like I could add 0 to 0 to 0, that would give me 0. I could add 0 to 0 to 1, that would give me 1. 0 to 0 to 8, that would give me 8. So now let's do 0 to 1 to 0, that would give me 1. 0 to 1 to 8, that would give me 9, which on division by 9 gives me a remainder of 0. Doing 0 to 1 to 1, which gives me 2. And then I'm doing 0 to 8 to 0. You just have to add all of these things up. Um, so that would give me 8. 0 to 8 to 1 would give me 9, which gives me 0. And 0 to 8 to 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. And um, on division by 9, that gives a remainder of 7. Can I have a bit more paper just for the remaining numbers? We just sort of continue in this way, kind of thinking of all the possible ways of adding up these three numbers, plus these three numbers, plus these three numbers, yeah. and then thinking, out, thinking about what the remainder is on division by 9. And when you do this, the remaining answers you get are 1, 2, 0, 2, 3, 1, 0, 1, 8, 8, 0, 7, 0, 1, 8, 7, 8, 6. So those are the 27 possible ways that you can add up these three numbers. And let's look at this list. What numbers are missing? So we've got a 1. So 1 certainly appears. We've certainly got the number 2, number 3. That appears. The number 4 isn't anywhere. The number 5 isn't anywhere. 
but certainly the number six is here and the number seven and the number eight. So this is telling you that if you take any numbers and sum the cubes of them and you think about the remainder on division by nine, you're never going to end up with a number whose remainder on division by nine is four or five. The conclusion of that is that there are no solutions to the equation that we're interested in, x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed is equal to k, when k has remainder 4 or 5 on division by 9. So remember I wrote before we weren't allowed integers k which were of the shape um, 9m plus 4 or 9m plus 5. Those were the integers which definitely didn't have solution solutions, and this is the reason. Well, actually, this is a very powerful technique, uh, which is used a lot in the study of Diophantine equations. In order to understand or rule out whether or not they have solutions, you can just think about what's called a local problem, where you just think about remainder on division by some fixed integer. So here we took 9, and this was uh, what allowed us to rule out, um, in fact, an infinite family of uh, integers k. Uh, which are representable as a sum of three cubes. If we'd have taken a different integer, say, f I don't know if we'd have replaced all of this calculation by two or by four, um, we would have ended up with a, a kind of similar list here, but in fact it would have covered all of the solutions which have this um, uh, remainder on division by four or two. And so we wouldn't have got any new information. So it's only going to, for any particular equation, it's only going to be certain integers which are going to be useful to look at. And in this case, it's the number nine. Well, actually, this is something I think has featured in previous videos. This is, we've been doing clock arithmetic on the clock with nine hours. Um, as, as I say, there's no reason you have to work with a clock with nine hours. You could work with a clock with a hundred hours or a million hours or every other hour. And it's a very powerful technique in the study of Diophantine equations. It allows you to, to, to rule out when this thing um, has solutions. For example, it's clearly a necessary condition for there to be integer solutions if it has solutions in every clock arithmetic, by which I mean uh, on division by 9, on division by 10, on division by 11, and, and so on. An area that I work in um, is concerned with the Hasse principle. So this is said to hold when this necessary condition, this kind of obvious clock arithmetic condition, is also sufficient to ensure the existence of integer solutions. So we're interested in finding families of Diophantine equations for which this principle holds. Namely, you just have to check whether um, uh, things hold in every clock arithmetic in order to guarantee that there are actually integer solutions. As of yet, uh, it's, it's conjectured to be the case that this Hasse principle holds for these, uh, these particular equations, sums of three cubes equal to k right here, um, but we don't have a proof of that, which is why it's quite interesting to try and search for solutions. We still don't know an answer to that one. So we've not yet been able to find any integers which when you sum their cubes you get 33. Search has been pretty thorough. So far they've gone up to, I think they've gone up to the numbers of size 10 to the 14. So that's one with 14 zeros after it. 